Hello, I am Say Hi Paul, and this is a short, hopefully short, video to tell you about the upcoming campaign that I am starting. Or in fact, if you're watching this, it has started because the first episode it should be available to channel members today. The campaign is called Maiden World. And it centers around three factions fighting over a lush green planet that was once, or from from their perspective still is, an Eldari maiden world. It consists of three factions. The Empress Children and Slanesh Demons. The Iron Hands of Clan Cargill. And the Yanari in all their reborn glory. The campaign is going to run in three chapters, each one with a subtly different focus and there may or may not be a little or a lot of time between each chapter. That all depends on how the games go and how the narrative plays out. Uh, chapter one is all filmed and ready to go. And as I say, if you're watching this, that means that episode one of chapter one is at least out. Uh, the plan is... Really, the day this video drops, the first video goes into the members' lounge, and then it's one a week until that chapter is run. The second chapter will come a little later on in the year. Uh, but that may be on public. It may be on uh, on members. It, I haven't decided yet. But it's a little break from what I've done previously. I'm going to run a whole little thing in one go. So bang, 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 rather than mix it in with other stuff. Um, so how do I get access to this members battle report? Well, you need a level two channel membership. There should be a link in the description below. Um, and for the, um, for the price of the channel level two channel membership, there are other campaigns on there. There's a back catalog of all the stuff I've done so far and I produce new content each week. It's around about three to four bottle reports a month per calendar month, give or take. Uh, you also get access to uh, members only monthly live streams and a members only Discord chat room. So that's what it is and how you get it. Here is Here are a few pictures and a little bit of story to whet your appetite. Hope you enjoy! Anesh Handroth stood motionless in the solarium of the starship that in the monkey tongue would have been known as Death's Kiss. I feel you're disquiet, said Yvrain, entering the chamber. Can you not hear them? The souls of our dead kin crying out in terror. You want to go to them. I feel it. How can I not? We must not be distracted from our search for the fifth sword. The skeins of fate are clouded. I sense a connection between this world and the fate of the swords. The servants of she who thirst will breach the webway. The forces of the ruinous powers constantly move against us. This could be a piece of a larger machinations or simply a distraction. But either way, how can we ignore it? It could prove to be our undoing. The chamber was still, save for the gentle whispering of the souls of the deceased as they swirled throughout the air. Always staying close to the living. Contemplatively, Yvrain reached into her belt pouch and withdrew five spirit stones, the iridescent surfaces catching the starlight in the solarium. We will let the dead guide us then, she said, placing the stones in the air one at a time, as if she were simply placing them upon a shelf. Once the fifth and final stone had been placed, an ethereal glow entered the chamber. A primitive eye would have been confused as to whether this was blue or purple light emanating from their auras. In truth, it was both and neither. Simply, 
the hue of death. The rain seemed to glow slightly in sympathy with the stones. Our kin are of the same mind as you, my friend. They would not see a single soul abandoned to that fate. It is decided. Prepare a war host and bring death to our enemies. This one. Push this one further up the chain, said the adept, before handing the slip to his savant. The docket described how the fledgling colony of mineral rich world MR81724 have missed their first scheduled tithe. Some four months later, a cogitator bank was processing the backlog of astropathic missives that had been marked non-urgent. Any such messages were placed in the queue for automated processing. The cogitator banks were running at maximum efficiency and as such, the backlog was being processed faster than ever before. If the adept had been capable of facial expressions, he would have beamed with pride. The latest processing run complete, he took the action report and placed it in the pneumato tube for further processing. This report contained all of the low priority messages that pinged on a cross reference with existing dockets from the other departmentos in order to enable the inference of a pattern. Adept Sarive 74 returned from her allotted four minute rest break having visited the expulsion chamber and reconnected with her workstation, opening the next file. 98 items for processing. When she reached the 49th item, she started generating an interdepartmental missive. MR81724, significant long-term mineral output projections. Overdue mineral tithe. Astropathic report of unknown spacecraft entering the system. Crusade era Astartes Patina. Significant modification. Imperial identification codes not broadcast. Chapter designation unknown. Potential heretic Astartes threat. Transferring to the office of the Lord Commander for further processing. Bute Gilliman strode down the corridor of an unnamed grey-coloured battle barge heading towards its embarkation deck, sirens blaring. His adjutant ran down the corridor to keep up with him. Latest deployment missives for your attention, Lord. The Primarch of the Ultramarines took the slate and unclipped the stylus. As he walked, he scrolled through each entry and with an eidetic recall of all force dispositions, strength and current deployments, made a mark against each entry and handed the slate back to his adjutant as he reached the embarkation deck. Action each as annotated, he instructed, as he unclipped his helm from his belt and began to fix it in place as he walked towards a line of gunships. An hour later, the adjutant was processing the orders for troop deployment ready to be sent to the astropathic chamber. He reached a record relating to world MR81724. It simply read, Relieve or reclaim world from heretic or xenos threat. Dispatch Iron Hands, Clan Cargill. The warrior stood impassive surrounded by a world that simply felt grey and lifeless. It wasn't, of course. It was lush and verdant, and almost seemed to give off an aura of life essence and vitality. He didn't see it. It didn't even register to his blunted senses. All around him his thralls laboured away, excavating huge chunks of the land, unearthing Aldari structures in the hope of finding his prize, or even some piece of ephemeral knowledge about the strange series of interdimensional portals that they used to move around the galaxy. 
His boredom might have led him to despair, but despair was such a faint emotion to him now, he may not have even noticed its arrival. Suddenly, he was shocked into awareness by a commotion around one of the dig sites. Something had clearly been found. He strode forward, gears in his power armor whirring, as he went straight towards the thrall who seemed to be at the centre of the disturbance. He saw something gleaming in the thrall's hand and grabbed it eagerly, casually shoving the thrall aside with enough force to shatter its ribcage. It squealed with delight as it collapsed on the ground. As he touched the stone, he felt its surface ripple with an almost tangible revulsion this wasn't what he was here for. This wasn't his prize, or even something that would help him towards his goal. But it was a welcome distraction, and he would savour every blissful second. He raised the stone up to his face, and cradled it against his cheek, and the soul contained within began to scream. This was no common or garden response to danger, no, this was a primordial thing. The soul knew that after thousands of years of laying undiscovered, that this was not salvation, it was utter annihilation. And its final moments, all it could do was scream in abject panic. This was like a soothing elixir to the warrior's skin, a riot of sensation to be savoured but as he rolled the stone around his face, basking in the sensation, it began to fade. The suffering began to seem mundane. He knew he must escalate it quickly, or risk the sensations leaving him. He placed the gemstone on his mouth, and bit down hard. The gem cracked, and with an eerie scream that gave way to the wail of agony and torment, the Aldari soul passed into the warp, and the dark Prince Slanesh began to pull it apart. Once he had finished quivering with delight, the warrior turned to the watching thralls. Find me more! <laughs>